Well, the most fundamental thing you need to know about a Cork Express page is that it's built out of two types of elements that work together to portray the overall design. These elements are boxes and content. The box is the most basic object you can place on your page. Boxes can be any shape and can either be uh, closed paths filled with color, such as in the case of the pieces making up this pie chart, or it can be an open path or a line, such as this line that we have over here as a part of our page furniture. Often the box will contain some other form of content, like text or a picture. When we click on this text up here, we can see that it's also contained within a box. Right? The box boundary is this blue line with these square handles. The same goes for pictures. If I scroll down to the next page that contains a picture and click on the box, we can see that that picture uh, is contained within the box. Now, each box can contain one of three different types of content, text, picture, or none. And we can see that by right-clicking on the box and looking at its content type attribute in the context menu, picture, text, or none. Normally, Cork Express will automatically manage the content type depending on what type of content you import into the box, but sometimes you might need to change it manually, and you can do that through the context menu that appears when you right-click an object. To create boxes, you just select one of the box tools and draw a box on the page. Many of the tools over here on the tools palette are capable of creating boxes, including the text content tool, the picture content tool, the uh, box tools which come in various shapes, the line tool, the uh, Bezier pen tool, and the table tool. To manipulate the boxes that you create, you use the item tool up here at the top of the tools palette. With the item tool, you can select boxes by just clicking on them. You can drag them around the page to move them. You can manipulate the box handles to resize the box. Or you can mouse out to the corner of the box and use the handle to rotate the box and give it whatever angle you need it to have in your particular design. You should think of using the item tool when you want to manipulate the box properties of an item. So the things that define the attributes of the container itself. If you want to modify the contents of that box, such as the actual text or the picture, then you use one of the content tools. The content tools are directly below the item tool on the tool palette. We have one for text and a different one for pictures. The text tool obviously lets you interact with the characters within a text box. The easiest way to move into the text content tool or the picture content tool is just to double click one of your boxes with the item tool. So right now I'm in item mode. I'm going to zoom into my headline here. I can click on that text box making up the headline, just double click it and that will automatically take me into the text content tool. Then I can type additional text, I can select text to apply formatting to it. I can actually interact with characters, you know, one character at a time. The picture tool does a similar thing uh, just for pictures. It lets you crop pictures by manipulating the content attributes of a picture, such as scale, position, and rotation. When you select a picture with the picture content tool, you get two sets of handles you get the square box handles that we saw before that lets you actually resize the container of that picture the box itself you should think of the box as a window through which you're viewing the picture content but there are also these semicircular handles at the boundary of the picture itself these handles are used to change the pictures scale and rotation without affecting the box so I can make the picture bigger or smaller. I can get it to be just the right size. I can use the corner handle to rotate the picture content and get just exactly the type of crop um, that I'm looking for. Of course I can click inside the box with the picture content tool to move it around inside of its frame. So how do you get pictures onto your page to begin with? Well that's really easy. You just select import from the file menu. That's also how you can import text onto your page uh, if you have it saved out in a, in a text file. 
Of course, you can also just drag them directly onto your page from the uh, Finder or the Windows Explorer. Just drag the files right onto your page and Quark Express will create boxes for those pictures. If you want to select or move boxes while using the content tools, you just hold the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Windows. This will temporarily invoke the item tool and let you drag out a selection marquee uh, to select multiple boxes or to just click on a box and move it around the page. When you release the command or control key, it goes back to the content tool. Generally speaking, I like to stay in the item tools while working with box geometry like basic page layout stuff or I'll stay in the content tools if I'm working with text or pictures. It really depends on the nature of the work that you're doing, but you will switch a lot between those tools. There's a lot more about boxes and content that define their appearance other than their shape, size, and position. There are dozens of attributes that control everything from the box's color and frame to the effect that the box has on surrounding text. All of these attributes can be found in the Modify dialog. You can access the Modify dialog for a selected box by going to the Item menu and selecting the first option, Modify or just by pressing Command or Control M, which is what people would typically do. The quickest way to access the Modify dialog is to press Command or Control and double click on the box. That will open the Modify dialog and you can look at all the various settings. You can see there are a bunch of tabs up here that I can scrub through to see uh, all of the attributes that are making up the appearance of this particular box. Similarly, the appearance of text is controlled by the attributes found in the Character and Paragraph Attributes dialogs, which are under the Style menu. Or it's not a bad idea to learn the key commands. Command-Shift-D or Control-Shift-D on Windows will take you into the Character Attributes dialog where you can set attributes that apply to individual characters like, in this case, we'll maybe change the uh, font face, um, the color, uh, the size and things like that. Attributes that exist down at the individual character level. Click OK and you can see that the word management changed. I'm going to go ahead and undo that change. Command or Control Shift F will take you into the Paragraph Attributes dialog. In here you can set things like line spacing, indents, uh, tab stops, rules that you want to appear below or above paragraphs, anything that affects an entire paragraph uh, you can find in this dialog. Collectively I call these three dialogs, Modify, Character, and Paragraph Attributes, the big three because they contain 90 percent of the attributes that define the appearance of a box and its content. Now if you want the complete picture of why something looks the way it does or what's available to change about an item, you'll want to look in these three dialogues. Some of these attributes are so commonly used that we put them all together on this smaller palette down here at the bottom of the screen called the measurements palette. You can see it also has different tabs along the top that change depending on what type of box you have selected. You'll get different options for a text box uh, as compared to a picture box. You should always keep the measurement palette open because it's where you'll do most of your work with Cork Express. But like I said, if you really want a full picture of what's going on with your boxes, you should look at modify character and paragraph attributes. So in this case, I can use the measurement palette to adjust some of my text. Typically the way it would work is I would select the text I want to interact with and I'd go down to the measurements palette to do things like change its font, uh, its size, you know, color, everything down to letting, tracking, uh, the color of the box itself, for example. So once you're comfortable with these basics, I hope you check out some of the other Getting Started videos that we have on our website at cork.com. Or if reading is more your style, take a look at the Cork Ed training materials that are available on the Learn More page of cork.com. I hope this has been helpful and that you can get out there and have some fun building some really cool Cork Express layouts. And thanks for listening.